Hi, mystery lovers. Welcome to Mystery Fix. And today I'm going to talk about fi finding clues in your mystery setting. Because your setting of your story can be a very rich resource for finding clues, hiding them as you're describing the setting. So I remember when I first started writing mysteries, I was in awe of writers who could create clues out of the setting. I was just like, how do they do that? You know, and I read Pompeii by Robert Harris and was astonished at how the clues in the story were directly related to volcanic action, mystifying the young aqueduct engineer. And I, I was like, Oh man, I I don't know. I I don't even know how that's possible. Um, but what I've discovered is that yes, you can do it. You just have to pay attention. So there are certain key places where you can add clues from the setting. Um, at the murder scene, in a suspect interview. And when the sleuth is reviewing the details and something pops out that didn't really strike your sleuth before. So while you're painting the big picture of your story, you can zoom in on the details and look for clues that create a realism in your story and are a rich resource. So I like to think of it as going on a treasure hunt for your mystery. So once you paint that broad stroke of your setting, the details bring the setting alive and are perfect and are a perfect source for the clues. So whether your story is set long ago and far away, or in your own hometown, you can spend time looking at details, and details are the secret. So, first of all, you want to identify specific locations and have them in, in your head. So, take a cue from filmmakers and go on a location hunt. Find the specific place, the specific house, the specific apartment, the specific street, specific hillside or meadow or corporate office for your story so that you have the richness of that specific place. If you make it generic, those those specific details are going to be lost. So um, when you're doing the research for your novel, really try to find images that represent that specific setting and um, you can use the web to look for images for the place and if you have clues you can find more images about that specific clue um, i really love videos of people walking around um, the location really gives you a sense because you know while their camera is looking you may see something that's just perfect for your story so um highly recommend that uh, you watching videos of specific places the settings that re that relate to your story and then for images um if you want to get into the details of a specific thing I don't know, so maybe it's a, a prescription bottle, you know. Um, you can use Wikimedia Commons for images related to your setting. And this is especially helpful if you're doing historical research. But there's lots of things that are modern settings. So go ahead, just, you know, go on that treasure hunt and look around. And the same thing's true for Google Images, because you don't have to worry about copyright. You're not going to be posting these images anywhere. You're just going to be using them 
for research for your story to really get a good idea of the details of your setting and the details for your clues. And then also don't skip flora and fauna. So think of the plants that are around and the creatures that may be walking through your setting. Um, and these are really fun to use. You can pick one and use it in your story as a clue. Um, and that's a fun thing to do. Then if you're looking for specifics, as I mentioned before, you know, that specific setting and um, say you don't live in Boston, Massachusetts, but you want to get a sense of what someone's home is like. Um, I like to use resources like um, real, est real estate websites. Redfin is my favorite. Um, so you can find homes, condos, even land for sale. Um, and the listings include images of the property, including, you know, exteriors and and interiors, bathrooms, kitchens, um, different bedrooms, um, all the rooms in the home. And also they have uh, demographic details about the location. So it may be five miles from um, a scenic landmark or something like that. So um, I, I find that's a rich resource of, of really getting specifics about the house that your character is in or the apartment that your character is in. And then, of course, the best way, uh, not always possible, but the best way is to walk around your setting, go to that location, take photos, um, look for details, look for details. The details are the part that are going to pop up as um, clues in your mystery. So as you go through all the images, focus on the details. I can't stress that enough. The, the background research is really cool for where you are and where you are, where your story is set. Um, but everything that you research isn't going to show up in your story. It's one of those 80-20 rules, you know, about 20% of your research actually shows up in your novel. So be on the lookout for unusual details, really specific details that you can um, hang on to and use um, in your story because those are the details that your sleuth notices. And then, you know, all those clues that um, related to the five senses, hearing, sight, touch, smell, um, so you can take it further. So maybe your perpetrator, uh, uses a special scent, a perfume. Um, don't just read the blurbs on the internet, but go and get a sample. So, um, you can describe that scent in your own words. And that's what makes the difference in the details in your clues, um, because unique clues enrich your story. So at the beginning of your writing uh, career, your search may seem overwhelming, but as you practice looking and you're going, yes, this is, oh my gosh, this is just perfect, or no, that doesn't work. Um, you'll get better at finding intriguing details to serve as clues in your mystery. So I hope that gave you some ideas about um, finding clues for you to use in your mystery. Mystery writing is just a lot of fun. So um, feel free to get in touch if you have any questions. And I will talk to you soon.